Hello everybody on the Hunger Star Community Network. Tonight you're watching the Friday Night Live. Thank you all for being here and watching on the replay. I'm gonna do the usual thing and I'm gonna do the invitation uh, and invite a few people to join. So bear with me while I quickly tap away as you'll see the phone vibrating as I've got it on something on a tripod right now. Well, I'll just quickly add a few people to join. So tonight, as always, on the Friday night, consistently I show up every Friday evening to deliver some inspiration, motivation and empowerment to you guys. Uh, this week uh, we're, shared, we're joined by Sally. You'll hear a little bit more, more about Sally in a minute. But uh, just to explain a little bit about what we tend to do on these Friday Night Lives. So it's an opportunity to bring on an entrepreneur or someone that's overcome adversity and someone that can share their story with you and maybe inspire you to do some of the things that you may not be prepared to do right now in your life for whatever reason whether that be you feel like you're unable to, whether whether that may be you feel you're not ready or stuck or don't have the ability or confidence. We're hoping that these people's stories may share some um, motivation with you to go out there and do, do those things. Um, so we've had some great people on, some stories of overcoming drug addiction, some stories of, you know, jumping from a career into full-time employment, uh, sorry, uh, entrepreneurship, all sorts of amazing uh, success stories. And uh, tonight is no different. So we've got Sally, who does a number of things. She is an anxiety coach, a singer coach, a hypnotherapist. She does uh, Brighton talks, um, and you'll hear a little bit more about her in a minute. So apologies again why I just press the invite button relentlessly, just to make sure that the people that may want to view this are going to get a chance to see it, because the group's quite large now. The algorithms are quite bad, and unfortunately not many people get the notifications that these lives are taking place. So a couple more invitations, a couple more buttons to pressing, and we're gonna start tonight's Friday Night Live, where we're gonna be sharing some hunger with you guys so that you can start your hunger. That's what hunger starts all about, you know, starting your hunger for success or life, so whether you can develop yourself or improve an area of your life. All right, my arm's aching, so I'm hoping this invitation piece is done. Obviously, I can't add 7,000 people, but I think it prioritizes them by people that are engaging. So the people that need the notifications will get them the most. Anyway, thank you everybody for joining. Thank you, Luke. Thank you, Greg. Thank you, uh, Sarah, Lisa, John, Amber, Astrid. Hello, Cash. Hello, Astrid. Lauren. Hi, Lauren. Zen, Paul, and Sally. So yeah, um, without further ado, oh, and I've got this little, look at that. I've got a tripod now. That <laughs> How impressive is that? Anyway, um, Sally, would you like to request to join this Facebook Live? There we go, and we'll bring you up and have a chat. Oh, where are you? There we go. Sally, approve. Friday night hunger with you guys. Let's get going. Thank you for uh, for sharing this uh, this evening with us. Hello. Hi, Lewis. How are How you? How you doing? Good, I'm, thank you. Are you well? Mm -hmm. Have you? You just? I've just saw you went live in your other group as well. So you're I full did. of lives tonight. I was just having a little warm up actually. Yeah. <laughs> I was getting did my brain. Yeah, it really did. Yeah, I was just getting my nice. brain in gear. Yeah. Nice. Good strategy for anybody. What you else. have to do. Yeah, it is. It's a good strategy. Because mm, I mean, Facebook Live is a big thing a lot of people are coming across. In the uh, Hunger Start Accelerator, it's one of the number one goals. I'd say it is the number one goal that the entrepreneurs have mm. is um, exposing themselves, showing up online, doing the whole Facebook Live thing. It's very daunting. It, I've said it before, but it's. It's no different to public speaking, mm. and uh, public speaking um, is one of the number one fears in the world, I believe. Um, really? So, yeah, it's uh, very, very similar with the online piece as well. Mm -hmm. So, thank you very much for for, for coming on and uh, and sharing parts of your story, which I guess is not an easy thing to do. So, no, it's not actually because it, it requires mm. you being a bit vulnerable. You know, when you when you get real, when you get honest, when you get open, yeah. my palms are yeah. sweating. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. We can't see that on camera, so no, no one is the wiser. But uh, yeah, so I mean, like like I like said before on previous slides, we have nothing planned, no questions pre-scripted. It's just a case of us coming on here, having a little chat, seeing what you're up to, and just sharing some value with people, inspire them, motivating them, whatever needs to happen uh, based on you know what we have a chat about, really. So. I guess you want to start by giving a little introduction as to who you are, what you do. Yeah, sure. So I'm Sally. And I, I mean, I've been a singing teacher, actually, for the last 18 years. And mm. a few years ago, actually, no, it was last year, I, I decided that 
I wanted to add on to my singing practice and I wanted to do something because a lot of my students, my singing students were coming with mental blocks around using their voice. And I thought I'd seen somebody else that I knew, a singing teacher had done this hypnotherapy thing. And I thought, oh, you know, I had a little scout around on the internet and I thought, well, what, I wonder what there is out there. And I found rapid transformational therapy, not knowing it was the same thing that my friend Gary had trained in. And in the end, I decided to train in it as well. And um, it was absolutely life changing. I mean, I had bucket loads of anxiety and I've always been a, a predisposed to anxiety. I remember having it when I was 18, when I was doing my A-levels. And then um, when I was at university, which was a f about six years ago, um, moved to Brighton to go to university um, and I did a songwriting degree. And I remember when anxiety just kind of hit me. And um, so it was really about kind of learning to, learning to figure out what it was, because I didn't really understand it in a way, learning to figure out what it was did a lot of mind body stuff, did a lot of qigong, did a lot of kind of breathing and meditation and slow movement. But actually it didn't, it worked in the time and it certainly soothed my nervous system. But I actually had, um, I had my 40th birthday a couple of years ago and I thought I was cured through doing all this qigong stuff. But actually because I, I was sort of in the room with all of these people from all different um, parts of my life. And I didn't realize, but I deep down inside was massively split. I was massively fragmented, like in my mind. I didn't really know who I was as a person. I had all this like conflict going on. And to have all of these people at my birthday party representing all these different parts of me just sent my mind into an absolute tailspin. And I ended up, um, I had, I nearly had to go to hospital. I had like a nervous system kind of massive crash where your eyes are rolling in the back of your head and people are slapping you on the face trying to get you around. So there I was with my posh frock, my, you know, I just had my makeup done at Mac and I just felt so humiliated and ashamed of myself that I had, you know, I was, I was 40, I was going to be, you know, the best I'd ever been and there I was like completely split and incongruent and so I really really made it my mission after that to figure out what was wrong with me mentally so having found this hypnotherapy I actually had a session of rapid transformational therapy with um, my friend Gary and it was just like a light bulb went on I realized what had happened to me in the past um, in order to create this kind of warrior I call myself a WAP champ <laughs> so in my <Yeah>. group <laughs> um so WAP is worry anxiety and perfectionism okay so it's like I shorten it to WAP but I'm a WAP champion so I you know that's my thing <laughs> I think a lot of people can identify with being a WAP yeah <laughs> where most of us are you know so yeah so what I do now is I treat people with I did, I've done a couple of um, RTT sessions this week, funnily enough, on people who want to become more visible. And What was that session you said again? They want to become more visible. No, the, what you did on them? Oh, RTT. Do you want to explain what that is? Yeah, so it's, so RTT is Rapid Transformational Therapy. Mm. Yeah. And um, I call it hypnosis on steroids. Uh, <laughs> Because I'd had hypnosis before in the past and I was I just kind of mm. scoffed at it. I was like, you know, it doesn't work. I'm not that suggestible. You can't trick me, um, mm. you know. But when I had rapid transformational therapy with Gary, um, it really, really works. I mean, he said to me during the session, your eyes are glued shut, sealed shut, locked together and they cannot open try to open your eyes and I literally could not open my eyes wow. I was just like shit this is real so um that's that's kind of convinced me to train as a as a rapid transformational therapist yeah I mean just quickly to sort of take a step back for people that don't 
really know what hypnotherapy is. Mm. Can you give a little explanation? I mean, there's actually a hypnotherapist I know just popped up, but for some other people, I guess they don't even know even what that is. So it might be a good idea to give a little explanation yeah. to give a feel for people in. It's basically slowing the brain waves down to an alpha or theta state. So when you and I now, our brain waves are vibrating, are, uh, yeah, vibrating, I suppose, at a beta measurement which i've got my i've got some notes i think i think it's about 40 cycles a second but when you go into hypnosis you just relax more and therefore you slow your brain waves down it's mm -hmm. like the space in between awake and sleep i don't know if you've if you've ever been drifting off to sleep mm -hmm. and you've had like a massive download of ideas and you're like oh my god i've got to find a pen now and write it all down it's like that part of your um, brain function is highly creative mm. and it's associated with um, imagination and feelings as well so when you're in hypnosis you're much more connected to your feelings so then okay. when you because in in RTT in the therapy that I do we um, go back to scenes in their childhood that caused them to become the way that they are today so um you know for example if you procrastinate you might want to go back to a scene where somebody told you that um you know you mustn't mustn't do this or you were humiliated or you were shamed into shutting down you know or you were shamed into using your voice so to speak um mm -hmm. and then you just shut shut yourself down naturally so um so anyway, sorry, my brain's going 10 to the dozen. So you're going back into regression, you're in hypnosis. And because hypnosis is the subconscious mind is attached to the feelings, you will have a very, very strong, a much stronger reaction to those memories than you would if you were just thinking about them consciously. And then once somebody has is reacting, you can see that they're crying or, you know, they're They've sort of been broken open you can then go in and fix them much easier <laughs> because the language that you use when somebody is in that feeling state has much more impact than um than just chatting to somebody sort of consciously or or, or chatting to somebody in like a counseling session so w when you say to somebody um okay so you were five when that happened to you that's terrible but that's not you and then they they get it they they understand yeah that's not me i'm an adult i'm a grown up i'm stronger than that i'm more powerful than that i'm i'm not like my dad i'm not like my mom you know i'm better than them and i'll never treat my children like that or you know whatever the dialogue is and you talk to them it's like a like a i don't know a curve so they're going down into the negative you break them open and then they come up the other side and you just hope that they do come up the other side and don't stay in that broken open place. <laughs> okay. So I guess it's, um, it's, it's also important for us to talk about maybe busting a few myths, not, not myths, but a few misconceptions of hip, hypnosis. Cause I know that mm. it's got a bit of a, sometimes it could be seen, I guess, as a, have a bit of a negative um, viewpoint from it because people see the, the, um, the what's it called the showmanship of it the um what am i thinking what word am i thinking of like the, the myth um, the um like um well the entertainment, isn't it? yeah the entertainment the sort of um the comedy aspect of it you know the uh, i'm going to turn you into a chicken and all that sort of thing and that sort of help that makes people feel um like it's some kind of magic do you see what i mean and i guess it's important to acknowledge that there is psychological yeah. you know um foundations behind this as to why it works and it's not but, just a case of magic and entertainment and performing no it's not and it can be i mean a couple of years no last year actually i went to see a a show with a hypnotist and he was also really psychic as well and it does seem magic i mean you know in we already know how psychic ability works because we're because everyone on the planet is connected so you know people who are psychic are just tuned into that sense much more so than maybe you or I. Um, so I guess hypnosis, yeah, I mean, it does have a bad rap, 
but I think when you use it for therapy and when you mm. use it in a positive light to transform people's lives, to change people's lives, to get them out of addictions. I mean, I've helped somebody recently with ulcerative colitis because a lot of chronic ailments come from trapped emotions, emotions that have not been allowed to be expressed through one one reason or another. Maybe, you know, maybe your parents were like perfectionists and they expected you to be a perfectionist and emotion wasn't tolerated, so you stuff it all down. And as a child, you know, children don't have logic. You know, they, they, they think it's their fault and they blame themselves and they grow up with this blame. So, hey, <laughs> Helen. <laughs> Sorry, Helen's watching. <laughs> Where is she? Oh, yeah. It just popped yeah. up. Hey, Helen. Hey, Helen. Um, yeah, so they grow up with this sense of blaming themselves and then that, that self-blame like eats away at them so you know using hypnosis for therapy really really gives people so much freedom to clear their sort of psychological baggage and you know hypnosis on stage hypnosis is fun it can be amazing uh, it can it can be really like whoa like magic um in a way but it's not magic it's just pure science and you know, I can show everybody that's watching how suggestible they are, if you like. Go on, go, <laughs> go ahead. Okay, so if you want, if you're watching, I'd like you to close your eyes and I'd like you to sure. hold your hand out, any hand you like. And I want you to imagine that in that hand I have placed a massive Sicilian lemon. It's huge. I've cut it in half for you and you can see the, the rind, the yellowness, you can see the pith, you can see the, um, the, the, the juicy bit inside. And I want you now to bring that lemon up to your mouth and I want you literally to shove that lemon in your mouth. And I want you to suck the juice. I want you to chew the flesh. I want you to feel what it feels like. Lewis is laughing. <laughs> I'm just very aware that I'm live on camera right now. <laughs> it's all right. Don't worry. And I want you to really, really, really imagine that and taste every morsel of that lemon. And notice what is happening in your mouth when you imagine this. So maybe you could put in the comments what your reaction was. You can open your eyes now. <laughs> Crazy, isn't it? Yeah, I did, it definitely felt something. I don't know if it was lemon, though. I can't go as far as saying it was lemon. <laughs> what happened yeah, you're having a you're having a, a physical reaction to something that is imagined. Mm. So you're basically salivating. So even though there's no lemon there, you can kind of get a sense of the, yeah, Nikki's like, whoa, <laughs> my brain tingled. <laughs> I can show you another one in a minute as well, but um, you can feel the acid in your mouth. Wow. Yeah. It's, I just have to say the word lemon and that happens. Um, have, you, have you seen that thing where the, you have to pretend to shake salt in your mouth? Have you heard that? The no, piece, what's the, that one? Oh God, no, I'm not doing it. Don't worry. For anyone that's, for anyone that understands that, You'll, uh, you'll be very appreciative for the fact I didn't do that to you right now. But um, it's, it's an inappropriate joke. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, basically, it's, you get someone to close their eyes. Yeah. Uh, should I do it? Should, no, let's not do it. Is it really? You, <laughs> you get someone to close their eyes and you get them to pretend that they're shaking salt on their tongue. And if you can imagine what it looks like to hold a salt shaker and shake something on their tongue. <laughs> Yeah, you're. I'm very thankful. I didn't allow myself to be childish enough to get you to do that. Because that would, <laughs> you would have probably hated me forever. But yeah, that's and, but the thing is, no, sis, because that's yeah, no, because the the thing is, when you're doing it to people, they go, "Oh my god, yeah, I can taste the salt," and then really they were doing all sorts of other gestures at the same time. There you so go. That's that's, that's like yeah. a little boy in you, Lewis, isn't it? I know, I know. I know. <laughs> couldn't help it. Couldn't help it. But at least I didn't actually get you to do it because that would have been. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, I remember, I remember doing that salt and someone got me with it and I did actually taste the salt. Yeah, you can. So, so I guess it's similar to lemon. Yeah, and it's just, um, 
you know, it's the power of your imagination, really, because all 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 um, physical reactions are first imagined. So, you know, your imagination, what what you are imagining is is having an impact on your chemistry on, mm. on um you know so you if you know if, if you have anxiety like i do you have to be really careful about what you imagine so if you mm. if you want to overcome this fear of public speaking imagine yourself on stage speaking and doing it brilliantly doing mm. it in a you know have you, have you heard of the power pose you must have heard of the yeah. power pose yeah um that sets you up really well i do, i always do that before i go on stage at inspiring talks <laughs> I, was, I was speaking to someone today and i won't mention their name because they're in this group but they were telling me today that they was doing that in a, in a lift at work yeah and she didn't realize there was a camera in the middle of the of the thing <laughs> so she was sitting there doing her power pose and then when she got out on the lift apparently later on in the day everyone was coming up to her and doing the poses and she was like oh no oh so, no yeah, be careful no. where you practice your power poses <laughs> And have you also heard that one where you sort of step into the power? You, yeah. You, you, yeah. I can't remember what it's called now. Yeah. Didn't they do that at Tony Robbins? You went to Tony Robbins, didn't you? Yeah. Yeah. I seem yeah, to I remember. Don't think they did it, no. Sorry? I don't think they did that this year, though. Oh, OK. Not maybe not. Maybe it was somewhere else. Yeah. Like a like a circle when you step into it. But you're, yeah. I mean, going back to the imagination. Um, mm. um, have you heard of Anita Morjani? No. So basically, Anita Morjani had stage four, excuse me, pardon me, um, stage four lymphoma, and she went into a coma. She had a near-death experience, and then she came back, and within a week, she was healed. Now, that seems like an incredible story, but that just put that to one side for a second. The, she believes that the reason she got this cancer so viciously as she did was because she was so terrified of cancer so so her 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 best friend died of cancer her brother her brother-in-law died of cancer and um she just said it was all around her so she spent so long researching how not to get cancer she believes that that is why she ended up getting it because she lived in fear of of this disease getting her and eventually it did it was almost like you know a self-fulfilling prophecy for her she was she, she was actively it. sorry she sort of manifested it yeah that's right by thinking about it all the time so yeah. you know your subconscious mind is so 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 powerful you really do have to make sure you you're you, about what you want <laughs> i'll tell you a story i've actually probably never shared before and it's actually quite crazy and i can I, I somehow have to, I'll get my mum on a Facebook Live one day to prove this one because it seems like a load of bullshit to be honest because it's one of those crazy stories. But um, I, I once had a um, had a fight and uh, they um, I broke my jaw and when they went to fix my jaw they put a camera down my throat and they scratched uh, my gullet and they tore my gullet mm -hmm. and um, I had like surgical emphysema. My air was going around my lungs and my heart and they said that you know I could actually stop my heart from from moving and I could die. Right and um, and uh, something else happened, a complication with it. I couldn't breathe properly. And yeah, it was all sort of crazy. And um, they said to me, they had to put me in for emergency operation to repair this gullet. Um, and they was uh, going to have to be, put uh, a tube in my throat to breathe, a tube in my bowel to go to the toilet. Mm. And so they could actually heal it and then let it and let it heal without getting infected. And they made me sign something to say that it was a 30% uh, chance I could die, like mortality oh from that operation, right? And uh, I remember being... I don't know if this was anything to do with it, but I remember being like ridiculously positive about it. Like, I think I was more in denial than anything. <laughs> I was going no regrets. I remember I've got a picture because I was like no regrets thinking that I'd sort of got myself in that situation on purpose or something. But I remember getting a picture, a selfie of me like that uh, after, just before I was going to the operation. Like, so I was just deluded in some way. And when I went for the operation, um, and they said I was going to be in uh, intensive care for six months as well. Uh, because they have to keep it all sectioned off while that heals because it gets infected and very likely to die from it. Oh my God. And um, when I went for the operation, they put me under the anaesthetic um, and then I woke up later and nothing had happened. And they told me that when they put the camera down my throat to do the operation, the, 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 the tear in my gullet had already healed itself. Wow, that is amazing. So I don't know if that was sheer coincidence or luck or fate or um, positive or sort of whatever it is. How long ago was this? It was about 
five years ago, six okay. years ago. And yeah. were you were you on this path then? No, no. Okay. This was when I was in uh, crazy chaotic behaviour state. And they even um, I remember because they actually even told me to ring my family and tell them that like, say goodbyes. Crazy. Bloody hell! Yeah, mm. yeah. I mean, obviously you've got a lot of the universe wants you to be here. <laughs> hope so. Hope yeah. so. <laughs> you got a lot of work. Andrew's asked me to get my mum on a Facebook live. God, you are God, the stories, Jesus, that would be, that would be, and do you know what I should do? I should actually get someone on the Facebook live that knew me from before and see if they can uh, shed some light, because I guess <laughs> it's quite weird, quite, be quite interesting to see what they might say. But yeah, so, um, I mean, I've been in loads of nip and near death experiences, like so many, yeah. and, and it's got, I've got to be careful, because I don't want to focus on it too much, because I'll get some sort of, um, complex where i think I'm, I'm unstoppable or something i'll be like running in front of traffic or something but um mm -hmm. but yeah i've uh, been slashed the back of a knife i've um i've had concussions so many times i've been overdosed mm. um i've been what else i've been hit with a wrench uh had a, yeah um do you think that suffering makes you stronger in that sense the amount of suffering that you've been through like because of the amount of suffering that you've been through, do you think that has really, really like almost like skyrocketed you to where you are now? Yeah, I definitely think so. Yeah, um, it makes you, um, it definitely makes you stronger. But also, mm. you've got a much better, a much deeper perspective of things. Mm. Um, and also, like in terms of fear and things like that, a lot of people that hold them, hold them back through fear and you know r taking risks. I've got such a warped state of fear and risk that actually i can push myself i guess a little bit further than some people would be prepared people, to yeah yeah Built for resilient um, mm, i guess so yeah mm. so yeah it's interesting it's interesting i don't know about if the physical um, damage done me any particular good to the earth <laughs> um i've got fake teeth these are fake teeth i've had them mm. knocked out in five countries mm. um oh, God. i've got a plate a metal plate in my jaw mm -hmm. um well oh yeah and i have um i can't well, I don't, I don't drink, but I wouldn't be able to drink it now anyway because I have fits if I drink. Um, right. So, like long ones, and it's and it's and it's um quite scary to think about it because there was um near us there was a festival recently and two two people died, um, and what the girl that died she died from having a forty five minute fit, and um I used to have forty five minute fits like quite mm. often like mm. long ones um mm -hmm. and it's just crazy to think that actually I was very close to to dying. A lot, so, a do you have epilepsy? I'm predisposed to it now, apparently, but it was from the drug and alcohol abuse. Like, I, right. I don't, I don't have to take tablets or anything. As long as I keep myself healthy and don't drink, take drugs. Yeah. I don't have it. Like, I was having them every now and again, and I was also have, waking up with like amnesia for about two mm -hmm. weeks after. Mm -hmm. um, but I didn't have any, and then I relapsed um, years ago when I was coming out of treatment, trying to see if I could have that one drink, mm -hmm. and. Uh, I had a fit straight away, uh, so I knew that, yeah, I can't, I can't do it. Um, yeah, I mean, funnily, yeah. you can't hypnotise somebody who has epilepsy, it's contraindicated, because you oh, can right. get, like, flashing, um, the yeah. eyes, um, you know, the light flashes, and it's, it can be quite strong, a strong mm. response for some people. Um, you can yeah. even get, like, little panic attacks as well, because you are digging stuff out, and the subconscious mind because it tries to protect you, it's resisting the change. Mm. It's like, you don't need this, you know, stay where we are, where we are is nice and comfortable. Um, mm. but no, as you, as, so yeah, people with epilepsy can be contraindicated to hypnosis. But Yeah, I definitely don't have epilepsy. I don't have, I'm not affected by lights and all that sort of yeah. stuff. It's just a predisposition, whatever that means. Like I've, I've, I think they told, I had MRIs and stuff and it was, I've, from, the, from the abuse, I've put tiny scar or scars in my brain um and that makes you prone to epileptic fits i reckon not if, epilepsy. i reckon if you imagined because the imagination is so powerful i reckon if you imagined your brain like this perfectly healed and with this amazing mm. like blue light white light gold light just breathe it in through your nose and yeah. like crack cocaine just <laughs> let it <laughs> let it like fire off all those neurons i reckon you'd easily heal heal it back yeah, yeah. why not the brain the well brain. i don't i don't i don't suffer with it anyway so it's it probably is i guess men I don't know about the actual scars but it's definitely not something yeah. that affects me so i think it yeah. can get progressively worse um yeah you can have nighttime fits and stuff's not good and mm -hmm. I, I, i've only just been able to have my driving license back because i lost it for three years not oh, from, right 
not from being banned, but just you can't drive um, if you have fits. So they keep on renewing it for like a year ban at a time until they think you're safe to drive. So they mm. just got that back. Mm. So yeah, interesting. Anyway, I didn't mean this to be about me, but I've accidentally sort of uh, taken all the attention. In the Little spotlight. therapy so back... session there, Lewis. <laughs> yeah, let's go. Yeah, you've opened me up. As soon as I ate that lemon, I knew I had to. <laughs> get Do you want another one? Chest. No, I'm all right. <laughs> I'll have some salt though. No, <laughs> you did it. Oh, don't it. <laughs> anyway, let's go back to you. So, right. um, you mentioned the hypnotherapy. You mentioned a bit about the anxiety, but you also do some talks and things in, in Brighton, don't you? Run some do. events. So, do you want to tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, sure. So, I run a night called Inspiring Talks Brighton, and I started it a year ago. In fact, in on May, May the tenth, we had our first birthday. Wow! Um, congratulations. Thank you. And actually, the place where I hold it is the place where I had my 40th birthday, which okay. is where I had that awful turn, had like four panic attacks and had to go home. So it's a, it's a real milestone, actually, um, having, having the event there. So we have, we pride ourselves on having people, having speakers from all walks of life. So, for example, this month we've got... Um, one of my singing students actually who's transgender and she's so she's going to be doing a piece of spoken word about her coming out journey not okay. just about being transgender but about being a lesbian as well so it's it's quite oh it's different you know yeah we okay. have we do have entrepreneurs we have musicians because obviously I'm a musician so I I know some people in that world and they talk about but basically, the theme is personal breakthroughs. What have you suffered? How did you overcome it? What have mm -hmm. you learned? What wisdom have you got to share? And they're short talks, um, 10 minutes. And so we have, we have one 20-minute speaker who, who might have got a book or something, a course that they're, they're selling. And then we have four 10-minute speakers. And we also have our Risky Biscuits. <laughs> So, okay. <laughs> so our risky biscuits are basically two people from the audience who come up, they've got something to say, they want to share something, and it's, I don't know what they're going to be talking about, so I'm taking a risk on them. They could be talking about, I don't know, um, something risky. <laughs> we do ask that they don't talk about politics. Um, well, they can talk about politics as long as they don't... Mm -hmm have a rant um, and we ask that they don't kind of talk about um, like a product that they're selling like kind of a network marketing thing um, it's yeah. fine to sort of mention it at the end but just not like a long spiel but our risky biscuits are people we take a risk on they take a risk because they're doing it unplanned and then they get a little badge at the end to say that they've done it so it's great. I love it. It's a really good vibe. Um, the reason I set it up was to become more visible. I wanted more singing students and I wanted more um, therapy clients. And, mm -hmm. you know, I thought at the same time, why not smash through my own anxiety and my own fear of public speaking? And, you know, if, if I do this, I can't back out. <laughs> and mm, I tell you what, yeah. I, I shit myself every month. I really, really do. Like it, it, it's people don't, people don't believe I have anxiety because I come across really confident, but it's not the case. Like it's, it, there's, there's a, there's a lot of stuff under the surface. There's a lot of stuff going on in here. There's a lot of anxiety management going on all the time. Oh. Um, you know, but I, it's, really, I, I do really admire you for, for your honesty there because there's a lot of coaches, therapists, mentors and stuff that try and portray this. Oh, you're making me think now. I'm coming across white and white. But, <laughs> but they try and portray this, I'm perfect, I'm all fixed, um, there's nothing wrong with me kind of thing. When actually, in fact, we are all completely human, just like the next, and we have our own stuff going on. Oh, and the right. fact that you actually help people with anxiety and also admit that you suffer with it yourself you know i think that's that's really powerful because obviously i guess you get a lot of people that reach out to you that can relate to the things that you're uh, experiencing uh, yeah. and just because you're not because you're experiencing something doesn't mean you can't help other people um that's, in the it. Same way, I guess. that's yeah. it exactly i mean i pride myself on the fact that i manage it well after having yeah. had that experience 
Um, I do manage it much better. But I, you know, I do. I mean, last year I went on tour. I was in this band and I went on tour with the band and I have travel anxiety, right? I don't like traveling. <laughs> I don't like particularly going on holiday. I've never, I mean, I've been on holiday. Don't like going on holiday? Not particularly. I, I like coming home. There you go. <laughs> Do you like the travel? Is it the travel you don't like or is it the actual holiday? It's being away from home. Wow. So, it, yeah, it's I love flying. I love being on trains. I love driving. I love any mode of transport. Motorbikes. I like motorbikes. But what I don't like is being away from my bedroom. Safety. Yeah, my safety, yeah. like, kind of thing. Um, yeah. I'm like a cat. I've got, like, a homing beacon or a homing pigeon <laughs> wow. um so i did this tour i was away from home for 10 days sleeping in bloody um hostels sleeping in airbnbs sharing rooms with people which i'm not very good at because i'm such a light sleeper and i re and i was doing gigs every night and i am not a late person i'm an early person so i wake up early rather than stay up late so it was such a stretch for my nervous system and I had to pull out everything to get through and, uh, and do it. And I don't want to do it again. That's fine. <laughs> I know um, being on tour as a musician is not the life for me. But I did it because I wanted to challenge myself to understand what, what the processes were to settle your nervous system, to calm down and to... You know, one of my fears is actually waiting. It's a weird one. Yeah, waiting. So wait, waiting for like waiting for the doctor, waiting for a bus. I can't wait. I don't like waiting. What is it that fears like you you feel fearful of? Um, it's what it is. It's not the fear so much. It's the it's the stasis. It's being it's being still. I'm sorry. Yeah, it's because my mind is racing. This is the this is the trouble with an anxious mind is it's always on the go. It's like always in the future. So when you wait for something, you are um, so your your muscles and nerves are kind of racing forward, but you're not. You're in that one place, so it makes your heart accelerate, and then you you start worrying about um, you know. Um, say you're waiting for the doctor or something you, you're you're creating all these illnesses that he's going to say that you've got and it all goes a bit crazy so what I've learned one of my biggest 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 learnings has been the power of reflection so when we sit and do nothing for 10 minutes half an hour whatever just let our thoughts bounce around from one like little clouds it gives our subconscious mind the chance to process everything that the conscious mind has experienced. So when that happens, when, when you don't let your subconscious mind process everything, you, it, it's kind of trying to do it all the time anyway, but it, it creates a lot of stress and a lot of like heat. So you get headaches and a lot of palpitations and a lot of frustration and maybe even anger building up in the heart center and the solar plexus. So by sitting and reflecting and just allowing those thoughts to bounce around, you're taking all of the stress out of everything that's kind of gone on before, you know, you're letting your mind catch up with itself. So when you do that, when you take time out of your day to do that, just sit and do nothing, it helps you to sleep through the night because you're not, you know, your subconscious mind isn't waking you up with everything that it's got to process because you haven't allowed it to do that during the day. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So it's that, that is, that's been one of my biggest takeaways from my um, anxiety, my work with anxiety is just to, is to be more, which is really, really difficult for me because I, you know, I'm so motivated. I'm like you. I've got a rocket up my ass most of the time. <laughs> and I just want to, like, go, 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 go on to the next thing. And I have so many ideas. But that is what creates anxiety. If you're not careful, if you don't understand how the mind works um, and you're just 
if you're just going all the time without reflecting and resting because it's, it's got to be a balance you know what i mean mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i've ended up going off on one um we were talking Leo. about firing talks weren't we <laughs> That's all right. It's it's ages all ago. <laughs> so we're talking about you. That's what we're talking about. Okay. So that's all good. So I appreciate that. It's a lot of it's very valuable to people that are listening because I bet there's a lot of, well, someone just said that I can relate, but I get there's a I bet there's a lot of people that can identify with things that you're feeling and maybe even thought that they were the only ones experiencing that. So to be able to hear mm -hmm. someone else say it, oh I can you know. And if anyone like, has got any questions, I'll be quite happy to answer them. Yeah. Any anxiety yeah, guys. Questions or Exactly, yeah, keep interactive. Guys, got any questions, drop them below. If you're watching on the replay, then I guess uh, they can tag you in, Sally, is that all right? They can tag yeah, you in and ask you any questions if they're watching on the replay, do the whole hashtag replay and ask some questions and we'll get back to you. But, um, but yeah, so I mean, what, what else is, what's next for you then? What's going on? Have you got any plans for the future? Um, what is next for me? Um, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> more of the same more of the same okay. well I, I mean i'm building up my um rtt business so i i want to try and move away from doing like single singing lessons which is kind of like my staple mm -hmm. and i want to move into creating packages for people so packages for people with anxiety they can have everything that i know they can have <laughs> people who want to do public speaking and people who want to sing. So I'm creating these packages, um, but I, would, I want mm -hmm. to kind of move away from single singing lessons and just really give people everything that I've got because I know that I can't help somebody in like a single singing lesson as much as I want to. I want to spend more time with them. I want to give them more of what I've got. So I've been working with Helen Packham business coach and Brilliant. Uh, yeah. Helen, Helen. yeah that's how i know you <laughs> through Helen. oh yeah because i came yeah. into your yeah yeah um and just to really like do more rapid transformational therapy sessions because it's what i love and i know i can help so many people through you know we've done <laughs> she said we'll nail that <laughs> um yeah, uh, I've done, you know, quitting smoking. I've done overeating with or compulsive eating with people. I've helped people to curb, you know, this shoving food in late at night and, um, yeah, helping people to do public speaking. Um, yeah, like the power of the mind. That's, that's my passion. I don't have any ambition to go traveling like you, Lewis. <laughs> well, if you don't like going on holiday, then I guess traveling is sort of off the cards yeah well it, i mean maybe there's a little barrier there that i probably do need to do a little bit of work on um but yeah for the foreseeable future just i'm happy doing my one-to-ones um yeah okay cool sounds good and it looks like you've got a lot of value to offer it might be cool if you're up for it to come and do in the accelerator maybe some some training well, i won't put you on the spot but yeah, it'd be nice i would say well, do you want to do it or not but, you know, <laughs> it'd be nice for you to maybe do some training around either hypnotherapy or anxiety or anything you do um because the, the the entrepreneurs and the uh, accelerator we, we do um, guest speaking and, and sort of training once a week and but just from this call I, I bet lots of people have got some value in it so i don't know you know mm. don't, don't feel don't feel the need to answer me now yeah yeah no that's... i'm definitely up for that like i love getting in front of entrepreneurs because they're hungry uh, pardon mm. yeah they're up for it they they want to move forward and actually i find mm. that my best clients are the ones who really want it you know you probably Absolutely. find it as well the people who pay the most mm. money for your services they're so vested in it that mm. um you know they they Think want it it's, it's the ones that who are just a bit half assed or they've mm. you know you've given them a little free. they don't it works it. best when you invest Oh, good. I like that. <laughs> I use that to sell all the time. <laughs> I say, yeah, it works best when you invest, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> it's true, though. It's true. But it is, yeah. I... People don't value it when it's free, do they? No, they really, really don't. Yeah. Mm. So, no, I'd definitely be up for that. Um, awesome. Yeah. Cool. Well, thank you very much for doing it. I won't take up any more of your Friday night, but thank you very much for, for joining us on, like I said, a Friday evening when you could be out 
gallivanting around with your pals up in town. Don't know if you do get up to that in Brighton. But I'm sure it goes on. Oh yes, it all goes on here. <laughs> yeah, I bet it does. I bet it does. Um, but yeah, but thank you very much for joining us. I mean, yeah, if anyone's got any questions, then you know, are they okay to tag you? Or, or, or what about if they want to reach out to you? Where can they find you? Is Facebook a good platform for you? Your yeah, page no, or what, what? I've got um, I've got a group called the Anxiety Compass. Um, cool. But they can um, they can contact me through Sally Garozzo, you know my normal profile. Just send me a direct yeah. message. Yeah. yeah so you can see, you can just click her name up up there, and it will take you straight through. Yeah, over there somewhere. <laughs> and uh, Astrid said she gets a lot from the Accelerated Program. I can only recommend it. So I had to plug that because obviously, um, oh, well, thanks, Helen's Astrid. Also showing you some love. Um, so yeah. Um, thank you very much. It's been great to hear. And, and, I, and I always find it really fascinating because I've never actually experienced hypnotherapy. Uh, it's not something I'm trained in either. Mm. So I, I find it quite, quite fascinating to learn all these different um, types of approaches. And it's all fundamentally the same sort of stuff. Like when he was talking about uh, taking people down and sort of breaking those limiting beliefs and rebuilding them as a more mm. empowering beliefs that are going to serve. It's exactly the sort of thing with other sort of conversational type therapies. But yeah. uh, I guess yours is sort of getting a bit deeper in the subconscious and more on, on an unconscious level. But yeah. yeah, I mean, it's great to see that we're all getting the same sort of results for people, but in slightly different ways. Absolutely. Um, it's all the same stuff. And, and there's a lot to be said for doing it, doing the work consciously as well, because then you can have that conscious choice. You know, yeah. when we do the work in the subconscious mind, you put the programming in, but then when you're conscious, you know, you still got to make that choice. Am I going to have that glass of wine or am I going to have a glass of water? Mm -hmm. You know, you're much more likely to have the healthier option if you've been... Um, working with the subconscious mind but it's all about choice you know yeah. making good habits good good habits good decisions um mm -hmm. yeah love it cool so <laughs> if you want an rtt session hypnotherapy singing you want to go to an inspiring event or <laughs> anything if you just want to give her a cuddle then sally is the oh. person to reach out, <laughs> oh, that's sally so sweet. Person to reach out i do sorry. cuddle all my clients actually yeah yeah. Oh, fair enough. I'll have to book in with you then. To book <laughs> <laughs> but no, quite um, well. some people, yeah. Um, so some people have said that uh, sharing your story, um, thank you for sharing your story. Um, the unconscious rocks. Andrew's actually a hypnotherapist herself, mm. um, amongst other things, reflexologist mm. as well. Um, yeah, Helen's going to book in a session with you, and Astrid said you're very inspiring. So oh, look, oh. lots of value from people. So thank you very much. And uh, Cash said thank you. Uh, love from India. There we go. We're oh, traveling across wow. the world right now. So thank you again very, uh, very, very much. Thank you again very much. No, that makes sense. <laughs> thank you very much again. Um, <laughs> and thank you everybody for watching. Have a great evening, uh, Sally. And thank you um, everybody else watching. Have a great evening. Thank you. Love you. Thanks very much. Bye. See you later. Bye. Bye. <laughs>